And we're going to demonstrate arrays of objects by creating arrays of dogs. The dog code is already handy, so it'll be useful to us. So I'm going to create a new class called uh, demo. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some dogs in this demo. And we're going to print them out, etc. All right. And what I want to do is I want to create five dogs, put them in an array, and then print them. That's what I want to do. So let's try it. First, let's say we were going to do it with integers. So if I had an integer array like this, and I put some numbers in here, here's some here's here's an integer array with five numbers, and then I wanted to print the array. Okay, so I'll just run this so that we can get uh, calibrated. And so here is my array. In fact, let me just change it so that it all shows up on one line, so I don't take up too much room here. Okay, so there's the array. I want to do a similar thing for dogs. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create an array of dogs. But instead of doing it like this, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to say dog array pack of dogs equals new dog. And I'll put five of them in the pack. And the first question we have to ask ourselves is, have we created any real dogs here? And I want to remind you that in order to create a dog, you need to do two things. You need to use a certain keyword, and you need to call a certain method. I'd like you to discuss with your partner what's the keyword you need to create a dog, and what is the call you need to make in order to create a dog. What are the two things you need to do? Mr. Oris Baev, sir, what is the keyword I need to use to create a dog? Sir, have I done that here? Yeah. OK. Sir, can you tell me what method or thing that looks like a method do I need to call to create a dog? I need to call a constructor. A dog constructor will look something like this. Or if not that, then maybe something like this. Something like that. You can see that the constructor call is going to have these soft brackets here, parentheses. Question, sir. Did I call any dog constructors here? I did not. So the single number one thing you need to understand for today's lesson is that at this point, I do not have five dogs. Mr. Pandali, what is your opinion, sir? What do I have? I have five of something. Like if I went into the memory where pack starts, there's something there, five of them. What is it? Sir, that's pretty close. What I really have are five pointers to dogs, and those five pointers currently point to empty spaces. The empty spaces that you're referring to have a specific name in Java. What are they called, sir? That's right. So what I have now is five null pointers. I'm going to prove that to you by printing them. OK, let's run this. And you, you can see that I've got five null pointers to dogs. I haven't created any dogs because I have not, create, I have not called the constructor for a dog. So now I'm going to show you, now that we have this array that can point to five dogs, I'm going to populate that with actual dogs. So let's create some dogs. We'll go dog A equals new dog. And the first one will be called Luna as always. Let's create some other dogs. OK, there are my five dogs. I've created them. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these five dogs, and I want to have these pointers point to these five dogs. So I would like you now to try and figure out with your partner how to do that. I'll get you started. And I want you to have this array now contain or point to these five dogs. Mr. Sneed, sir, do you have an idea of how I can initialize these pointers in this array to point to these dogs? So should I write dog A here like that? Just A. OK, let's do that for the other dogs also. All right, so we have our five dogs here. And now if I was to print them again, so look, I'm printing them before I initialize them. I initialize them, and then I'm printing them again. So here they are before they were initialized. Here they are after they got initialized. So you can see now I do have finally uh, an array with five dogs in it. I had to initialize them but because I, I had to make a constructor call. Now you notice that here I created each of the dogs individually. I set them with their own variable names, and then I associated the variable names with the locations and memory in the array. 
I don't have to do it that way. I can do it all in one shot. And I'm going to show you that now. So I'm going to create another array of dogs. This time, I'm not going to bother creating them separately. I'll do it all on one line. I'm going to use the shortcut operator to create the array of dogs now. So I'm going to go dog array pack two. This is a different pack. And I'm going to use this bracket operator here. And I'm going to say new dog Luna. And I'm going to add however many other dogs I want. New dog. And what I'll do is I'll just make this a slightly smaller pack. It's only going to have three dogs in it like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to print this particular array now. So I'm just going to copy and paste some code to do that. So I've created another pack of dogs. Have I called the constructors for the dog here? So right here, look, constructor call, constructor call, constructor call. Have I used the new keyword? I have right here. So now I have an array of three dogs called pack two. I'm going to print that array. And you can see that here is the second array right there with the three dogs in it. Now I want to show you some pitfalls of having arrays with objects. You'll notice that when I have an array of integers, it's pretty clear that each element in here is going to populate the array. But here, it's not so clear. For example, let's say I was to comment out this line right here. And now, how many dogs have I initialized in this array? That's my question. When I print this, am I going to get a runtime error? Certainly, Luna will print. What happens when it's time to pit print pack one? Will I get an error? Will something else happen? And then, well, I'll continue here. It'll print null for the ones that are not initialized. So let's run this one now. I'm going to turn this off because that's going to just confuse us. So I'm just going to look at this one right here now. OK. So I have the version with all nulls. Here I have the version where Luna, Buna, Guna, and Fred are initialized. But this item in pack one is not initialized. So let's run that. And you can see that this one is null. Notice that you don't have to be afraid to print a dog when it's null. But you are going to run into trouble if you ask that dog to do something, because this dog does not exist. So if you ask it to do anything, like if you asked it its name, you're going to get a runtime error. Let me show you that. So here, instead of printing the entire dog, let's say I was just printing the names of the dogs like this. Now, when I run through this array, this one's going to be fine, because I'm going to ask the A dog its name. It's going to say Luna. When I go to ask this pack sub one dog its name, there's no dog here. So I'm going to run into a runtime error. Let me show you that. And you can see here I've got a null pointer exception because I asked that dog in position one with index one, hey, what's your name? But there was no dog there. It was just a null pointer there. And you can't ask a null pointer to do anything for you. So that's no good. Now, if I was to put this back and now there is a dog there, then of course I don't have an issue. You can see that all the names of the dogs will print here. You see that, right? like that. So now my question to you is, is there some way I can put a guard in here so that if it is null, I can skip over that dog and not try to ask it its name? How can I put a null guard in here so that it will know not to ask the dog its name if it's null? So let's look at how we might do this. I'm going to go like this. And I want you to discuss with your partner, will this work? OK, what do you think? Is this a good way to guard against the null? It is not, because once again, I have asked this pack sub i, which in this case is a null pointer. I've asked it to do something. I've called a method on it. You can't call methods on a null pointer. So now I'm going to get the similar error now. And you can see I've got a null pointer exception. So this is the wrong way to guard for a null. What's the right way? Ms. Erda, do you have an idea of how to guard against the null? I'm sorry. So tell me what to write here, Miss. OK. That's the right way. Let me show you now. It's going to print Luna. It'll skip over this one because there's nothing there. And then it'll print Buna, Guna, and Fred. See that? So this is the right way to do a null.